Here we are just to give some context to where this woodland walk is uh, taking place on the third week of April 2021. So we're into spring now. We can see we're in the city of Plymouth. In the backdrop there we have um, Cornwall, now Edgecombe. You see the cityscape there just in front of us and literally a minute to my left is the start of our woodland walk. So you have these lovely mature urban woodlands right on so many people's doorsteps which we're going to go and explore this morning as we enter the uh, woodland proper now we are seeing before us here a beautiful display of blackthorn blossom not quite in the splendor it was in the this time last week even but just really looking beautiful here on the outskirts of the woodland Ivy everywhere, ivy really is persistent around here on Bramble. And um, we have some, lovely to see a few bluebells here, the English bluebells and celandines. And as the sun is um, out, we have some of the celandines being able to open up and look beautiful. Development here still of the uh, much sought after ivy berry. Really good for food for all kinds of creatures and of course nesting sites and and here just here we can see the hawthorn thorn bush which um, and it's just there below the blackthorn of course the blackthorn has the flowers the blossom that comes first then the leaves and you can see here the blossom is gradually fading and the leaves are coming into their own hawthorn the other way around the hawthorn develops its leaves first and then we have the display usually in May, but it can be much earlier. Actually, it is usually much earlier. The beautiful display of May Blossom. Here, a really good establishment of English bluebells being here for many a decade, if not century, through this area's lords and ladies there. Looking very beautiful. Holly. And on the edges of this little copse, we have the very characteristic red campions starting to come into flower. And here all the way along here, we can see here the pretty much uh, evergreen at times, Budlia, that introduced species which thrives and often dominates, but of course is, can be good in the right context for, for the butterflies and bees. Just here as we walk along this woodland track, all the bird sound. Walk through an area of sycamore. Sycamore gradually, the leaves gradually getting larger and larger. You can see here, silver birch, distinctive bark. And here, A ash, ash tree. It's a rowan, yes, that's a rowan. And in the background, we can see a lovely cherry tree pushing its head up and a very, very <laughs> tame uh, wood pigeon. The pigeons around the park here don't have any real fear. I say that they will keep their distance compared to the feral pigeons in the city centre but uh, there is a different kind of relationship here between man and animal the magpies and that gets so close as do in the city the the um seagulls near the sea but uh, it's just absolutely beautiful just walking through here now just listening to all the lovely sounds looking at the sights here Got a dominance of uh, sting and nettle, all okay in there. It's right contacts, but not particularly nice if it's uh, all around your ankles where you're walking, but uh, very beautiful here indeed. Just to look at those lovely tall trees and see the last year's 
ash keys there. So telling us that's a ash tree, just a branch coming down from the ash tree there. And got a distinctive uh, hawthorn bush stroke tree now there, thriving. You can hear the chatter of the magpies now. And the songbirds, blackbirds and robin. And there's a beautiful sycamore tree there, which is starting to come out in all its splendor here. See the leaves are gradually getting bigger and bigger. Come across a few bird watchers already. I say literally a stone's throw from the city, but here you could be in the middle of the rural countryside. Well, this is countryside, but it's in the city and it's these lovely old established, <coughs> excuse me, parklands which have woodlands in them. You know, some of these wooded areas are so very important to conservation measures. The councils often are very good, certainly in our area for tree planting it seems and maintaining things, sometimes leaving things as they should be. Here look, here we have the, this is oak, yes, this is the oak starting to come out with its sort of faded coloured leaves initially and then you'll get them larger and greener. Back round there I can see, a, as you can see the Scots pine there, can you see that there, beautiful. And they're one of my favourite oaks. Oh, there's a wood pigeon going up. See, look, he's not too concerned that I'm here. He's seen me, or she's seen me. Not too concerned. We'd be building nests at this time, most certainly. Probably sitting on some... a brood somewhere around here. But you can see up through the canopy quite easy there. There's the wood pigeon up there. Ring-neck dove. There it goes. We get quite a lot of um, squirrels will frequent here. Probably also doing their breeding activity in a dray somewhere. Here, yeah, lovely to see the pennywort there growing. Pennywort, just really quite dominant there. A young sapling of a syca sycamore, they grow like weeds, as do the ash, don't they? They just grow. <coughs> without much encouragement at all. All these like naturally made paths over the years just going through areas. There's a ring neck dove just down at the base of that tree. It is so strange because in a, a rural setting the ring neck dove pigeon, wood pigeon, would not allow me to be getting this close. It's quite, uh, there he goes, <laughs> quite funny really. Yeah, all these paths that wind up and down through like this made just by people coming day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, certainly. And in some places, some of the old, very old areas, literally century after century. Here in the lower story, we've got some hog, some hogweed coming up there, the umbellifers. We've got the um, Celandines, some f there we've got some uh, looks like either an oak fern or lady fern there starting to unravel. Tongue fern there as well. Lovely old twisted oak there. Of course, these beams, when they had all their shapes, were good for the wooden shipbuilding time, but not much now for um, when we want straight timber, but for wildlife and conservation. It's lovely to have the look of it and the habitat creation of all the nooks and crannies, all those niche environments for mammals and birds and mini beasts to thrive. That's probably, I can hear a little um, in the background there, a little nut hatch. I can't see it. A little tap 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 of a nut hatch, screech of a magpie. 
that knock knock knocking is a carpenter nearby I think but uh, Now when a tree is given lots of extra attention by not being uh, sort of swamped out with other trees growing around it they can do very well and that is the often the case with the parkland trees isn't it where um, in, you know, in, in rural settings but also urban ones where you have large estates where trees are um, sort of central to a parkland sort of landscape. I nice to see the bluebells there in the background. And here we have uh, trees that are probably 150 year old plus beautiful beech tree here which still shows its sort of autumnal winter shape not yet laden with those dominant leaf canopy that will soon be around and here though this is managed in this area in a, a natural more natural uh, setting there wouldn't be much growing underneath these beech trees <clears throat> as we know it's the domain maybe of the holly but as we just look through here now it's just very 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 peaceful you get a red a young redwood tree there or is young <laughs> that's in probably only about 50 60 years old can see here the distinctive leaves of the horse chestnut tree look at that they're going to get so large you've got the flowering structure is developing there we can see on this beautifully established uh, horse chestnut tree <coughs> young silver birch there also youngish <laughs> just so peaceful here so many people make use of this woodland walk area because it's just beautiful very peaceful and I hope you're able to enjoy just the the ambience the sort of the general atmosphere <clears throat> as the speaker picks up um, oh and there we have a J look in the background look we have a J there lower lower part of the canopy we have a J there now the J I think knows I'm here isn't too concerned Oh my gosh, they would have been making such a noise now in the more rural setting, but they don't make that alarm call. They probably make that alarm call if a fox was going by, but there we have the J in the lower part. Beautiful colours. Don't usually get so close. There he gone. And there's the ring necked of the wood pigeon up there. Looking glorious. And we have the developing needles on the larch. Conifer up there. And just walking up here you can tell distinctively this is another horse chestnut tree yeah look towering above us, above us. there we have the cones from the larch tree good overwintering of bramble here so ready to do its stuff in the spring oh there there we have some jay activity having a fight with somebody or dispute with some magpies maybe maybe there's a dog in the area but uh, they usually ignore them all over. Oh no. <laughs> ah yes, there is a J. I can see in the very background there. Must be having some kind of territorial dispute, I think. And we have a I think a magpie up there. Probably been causing mischief. Oh no, it's a crow. Oh no, it's a magpie. No, there is, it is a magpie. Yeah, there it is. And there's the jay, all perhaps there, getting too close to their nesting site. Could be just that, actually. Oh, there's a jay. There's the jay. Oh, there's a pair of, oh, two jays. Two jays having a bit of a scrap dis disagreement with the magpies. Oh, now the magpie's moving in. There, we have two jays there. Beautiful to see. In a rural setting this would be so hard to get anywhere near a pair of jays like this 
so difficult and they know I'm here. Look, I'm going through the undergrowth now. That we know he's a little bit freaked out now. There's two jays. But I think it's a territorial thing. Maybe they do it every year, maybe. It's, uh, we've been very, very fortunate with the weather. It's so lovely to be able to walk along some of the tracks without slipping around because it's uh, nice and dry. I'm just going to go around the corner here and see a few more sights. I hope you're enjoying this uh, time out with me. My name's Andy. I live in Plymouth. I was uh, a farmer. I've always been a keen amateur naturalist, conservationist. I did a few bits of study of the subject at university, but mostly agriculture. But I really do enjoy the natural world and our need to conserve it and in some cases preserve it, it seems, in certain settings. So here we are, very beautiful. So we're in the corner now. And there's quiet Mr. Robin Redbreast. What do you make of all that? hullabaloo with the jays, eh? Yes, I know, it's a bit stressful. Oh, no, okay. Not wanting to talk this morning. It's lovely to see so many people out. Obviously, I'm not including them in the film. Um, but a number of people who stop and talk and just so amazed by all the beauty of the... Uh, plant life around us. Very apt with Plant Life International. It's, uh, it is very, very beautiful just to see all this available and has been available through, as we know, the lockdown time. People have been free to do their exercise. Some not so fortunate and some not able to get out so much. So hopefully this might um, help some of those who are listening to this and watching it to be able to enjoy some of what many of us can easily take for granted each day even. A little nostalgic for me even. I used to walk along here with my grandparents as a boy and I'm now in my late fifties and I would, I developed a desire to collect the um, various droppings of animals and preserving them in celluloid and acetone and the owl pellets which were, were mainly from tawny owls and then also barn owls with the two blunt ends and take them apart to see what they'd had for for a meal. Oh, I can see a squirrel. Okay, squirrel by the back. There he comes. They're usually relatively tame around here. We've got a magpie there in the branch above. And there is Mr. and Mrs. Squirrel to the right of the bird box. Good morning to you. My sheepdog who passed, sadly passed away recently um, would get much exercise um, in vain chasing the squirrels. But there's a squirrel, there he is. Oh, where's your dray then? Bit of a breeze there. So I'll just turn the camera around out of that. Hopefully I'll go up this bank now, I think. <coughs> Getting a good workout myself this morning. There's a carrion crow there on the branch. main weakness lacking I have is recognizing distinctly different bird song. I wish I know some of the classic ones, but some of the small bird song eludes me. A lot of chattering going on there, isn't there? Beautiful songbird. Could be a thrush, I don't know. I think see there the canopy of the oak tree gradually 
going through that sort of browny stage before greening up for the summer canopy. <laughs> it's interesting, that's a funny distraction. There are uh, some, I would say, raspberry canes there. <laughs> Bluebells there in the backdrop. Well worn tracks going through the woodland. Okay, so as we exit the woodland now, going to the main central park area, being enjoyed by many people. Hope you can join me again in the height of the summer when we will see the canopy will have exploded with colour where the flowers <coughs> will just be out in all their splendour anyhow this is goodbye from sunny Plymouth